Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast, and joining me is uh, one of the best and brightest veterinarians in the swine industry. Dr. Paul Yeski, a veterinarian with Swine Vet Center, is here to join us today to talk about uh, mycoplasma elimination. Paul, welcome to the podcast. Hey, it's my pleasure to be with you this afternoon and to uh, share some of our information. Paul, uh, I've had the pleasure of working with you for many years. Um, for If there is a chance anybody in the pig industry doesn't know you yet, why don't you give a brief background on yourself um, and your role there at Swine Vet Center? Sure. Um, my, my job at Swine Vet Center is uh, a swine veterinarian, and uh, I've specialized in disease elimination, particularly uh, PERS, mycoplasma, PEV. Uh, so I've done a little bit of everything, but I've spent a lot of time on mycoplasma and uh, what I'd like to do this afternoon is kind of share with you some uh, uh, little different twists on the mycoplasma elimination. Paul, you said something at a farm one time that I'll always remember. You know, we fight PERS, we fight mycoplasma, we fight flu and those finishing pigs. Mycoplasma is probably the most consistent one that we can eliminate. And I know you're here to talk to us about elimination and been working on it for years. So I'll, I'll turn it over to you. What's, what's the latest and greatest ideas you've got for eliminating mycoplasma? You bet. Um, no, I'd, I'd be happy to share. And uh, like I said, what we tried here on this particular uh, case study or farm uh, was to try a little different approach. And so uh, we've tried some whole herd medication programs and they've had somewhat limited success when we don't follow it with a herd closure. So uh, and typically we've done the medication programs where we do those at the back end of the closure. So you've got that 240 days of uh, time frame while you're in the closure that you're still generating positive pigs or somewhere between positive and negative pigs and so still getting some of the losses. And so the thought process was, uh, can we uh, shorten that process? And we'd done it with some uh, different studies where we'd looked at using an injectable where we injected all the sows um, and the piglets and uh, those were successful. And so the question was, uh, can we do it uh, using uh, the water medication route and uh, work with the uh, folks at Elanco? Um, to, they helped to sponsor this project, and we looked at using Pomotil AC in the water, and we looked at using that as our uh, medication program. Uh, what we started out with was we had a herd that uh, had an acute outbreak. Um, they'd been a real stable herd, and then all of a sudden destabilized as they changed their guilt source and uh, then became active infection. We went through and we uh, standardized the, uh, the exposure to all the animals. We did a fogging of the herd and the, and the GDU, uh, and then we closed the considered that as our day zero after we confirmed that the animals were positive, and then we closed the herd for the 240-day period, uh, but instead of waiting to the end to do the medication, we started up front and we did seven days of uh, the Pomotil AC, took seven days off, and then we did an additional seven days of Pomotil in the water. At the same time we started the water medication, we started treating the piglets at birth uh, with Batril injection. And then at 14 days, uh, we retreated those piglets uh, for a period of four weeks. And then we started monitoring that flow downstream uh, after, after we'd completed that process. And so uh, again, it's very similar to what we would have done in, historically at the back end of a closure. We just did it at the front end of the closure to try and uh, pick up that uh, performance gain through the time frame. And uh, the, the beauty of this design is you can have a plan B. If things don't go as you expect, you're in the herd closure, you can come back and do a additional medication at the back end if the diagnostics tell you that's necessary. So it's... Uh, it's got some flexibility to it in the fact that uh, I can try and get the best of the best from the front and have negative pigs that time frame. But if it's not successful, I have an opportunity to still salvage the project and, and get value. And so uh, that's the thought process here. We followed this herd through. And fortunately, as we followed this herd through over time, what we saw is once we got through that period of medication and we started following those pigs through the system, uh, that we were indeed able to produce negative pigs through the growth finish phase. And we tested those pigs at the end of finishing uh, to confirm their status. 
And uh, we did that using tracheal swabs. We did tracheal swabs, of course, South Farm to confirm that we got everything exposed in the beginning. And then uh, we uh, did that uh, in the various finishing sites as we as we went on through the through the process. And so um, the um, we did see and we went back and we looked at some records uh, for the for the farm. And, and one of the challenges here is uh, when you do these sort of look back studies is your before and after. So, you know, there's a lot of things that can change before and after. But uh, what we did see was um, we did see a slight reduction in pre-weaning mortality. I wouldn't necessarily say I've seen that before. It was about a half a percent, uh, which isn't big and may not may or may not be significant. And we saw a reduction in the uh, nursery uh, by a couple couple tenths. Um, and I wouldn't expect a lot of mortality change in the uh, in the nursery. And as we looked at the finishing, uh, we dropped that by about three percent on the mortality, and we saw a better average daily gain and better feed efficiency, which are probably the things that that pay for it the most and the and the best. So. Again, not only we saw some mortality differences, but we also saw that average data gain feed efficiency improvement. And as we got to the end of the study, uh, we uh, went in and we looked at uh, the sow herd uh, using tracheal swabs, and we followed some of those early groups uh, through the finisher using the tracheal swabs, and everything was testing negative um, through, the, through the study. And so it certainly uh, felt very good that we were successful uh, the producer, however, decided at the end uh, to uh, have a belt, suspenders, and a belt, and uh, decided to run some CTC at the back end just to give themselves better opportunity to be successful at the end. Uh, again, not a huge cost on the back end because we ran it through the feed and um, <clears throat> just did it as an insurance policy. But uh, the herd continues now. Uh, we're quite a ways down the road and continues to be negative, continues to test negative, and the pigs uh, continue to be performing well. So again, I think uh, as we talk about mycoplasma uh, eliminations, there's uh, lots of different uh, uh, protocols that are out there. Uh, I've done many different protocols, and I'm sure as we go into the future, there's going to be more. Uh, but this one still uh, takes advantage of some of those basics. We got everybody exposed. We had a solid uh, day zero, and uh, we used the closure, the herd closure, the 240 days, again, one of the things that have been time tested over t over the course of time. And uh, then we did a medication program, but here we did it up front, and it appears that it made uh, made made good success. Uh, one of the other questions that I oftentimes get from people is, well, I can get the self harm done, and, uh, you know, gee, I get all these negative pigs, and I put them in a pig dense area. What's my likelihood that these pigs are going to stay negative and I'm really going to get the benefits you're talking about. And uh, it's a fair question. Um, we were able to do a study here a few years ago. It's been a while back now, uh, but where we looked at uh, 100 different finishing sites. And when we went in and looked at those sites, we looked at 50 of them in the summer and 50 of them in the winter just so we could see any seasonal patterns. If there were, were seasonal patterns, then only 6% of those sites became infected. And these were in very pig dense area in... Uh, Southwest Minnesota, northeast, uh, northwest Iowa. So uh, definitely a lot of pigs in the area. So it wasn't a shortage of uh, local exposure. So with that, uh, with that being said, I think you know that shows we've got a good opportunity there. And uh, I think if you look at it over time from an, from the economics, and I did some work with uh, Daniel Linares, and you know I think five dollars is probably a pretty good number when we talk about what's that uh, what's that worth. And, um, and so I think there's certainly some advantages here, uh, for herds when you got the opportunity or, if, uh, you know, something comes up, if you're in a PERS closure, it's certainly easy to piggyback on a myco, uh, closure. And I think we've got a number of clients that have gone on and just done mycoplasma on its own, uh, just to go ahead and pick that up as well. So... Through continuous innovation, trusted solutions, and accountable insights, the Lawn Co. is invested in helping you achieve the full value of every decision. Their portfolio offers solutions to manage disease challenges, minimize variation, and mitigate mortality to optimize pig health. 
Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholerasias and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Beringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both stereotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Beringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Paul, thank you very much for coming on. Um, tremendous information. Um, I would add in for the audience, uh, Paul, I think your name's on this paper, but Sam Holst with your team wrote an amazing review paper several years back in, uh, in JSHAP um, on mycoplasma elimination. So I would encourage the audience, if uh, if you're interested in mycoplasma elimination and need some, uh, some foundational building blocks of how to get started with it, check out Sam Holst's uh, research paper. Um, it uh, is a wonderful overview of all the knowledge that at least was out there when that paper was published a few years back. Um, Paul, it's been a pleasure to have you. Thanks for coming on the show. And to our audience, thanks for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Check us out on our website, swinehealthblackbelt.com um, and subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on, uh, on our episode. Paul, it's been a pleasure to have you on. Thanks for this and thanks for everything you do for the industry. Thanks a lot. Pleasure to be here. All right. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it with me and share it with our audience, feel free to send an email to healthblackbelt at swineit.com. And we would love to take a look at your research.